story ends on a warm spring day. Several miles up a quiet canyon, among the fluttering shadows at the base of a beautiful old cottonwood tree. Though, perhaps it doesn't matter where and when a story ends. Far more important are the moments we experience along the way. Traversing a rolling sea of slick rock without another soul around for miles. The fresh scent of cottonwoods drifting in a warm afternoon breeze and the playful chirps of bats fluttering against the evening sky, greeting the stars as they emerge from their restful slumber. These are among the many things I love about visiting the canyons of Southern Utah, and it's why I return year after year. But this isn't to say that all of my trips have been easy. There have been many years I've sworn I would never return, even as recently as only two years ago but there's something about this place that keeps calling me back, enticing me to dig deeper, to work harder, and to find the sort of subjects that speak most to me. I've produced some of my most meaningful work in these canyons, surrounded by solitude and away from the distraction of everyday life. It isn't always comfortable, but that's all part of the process. With photography, as with many things in life, we receive the sum of the work we put into it. And sometimes the magic ingredient is a pinch of misery. So here I find myself once more, surrounded by trees and canyon walls now familiar. But this trip will be different from those in years past. After revisiting a favorite canyon, I'll branch out and explore a new one, a canyon I've wanted to visit for quite some time. This is a story of my spring of 2022 visit to the canyons of Southern Utah. That was definitely a very long day. Uh, 11 hours of driving starting at 3 a.m. Uh, and then several hours of hiking. But I got my camp set up, had myself some dinner, uh, purified some water. And this is a canyon that I visited for the past several years or so. And uh, I just wanna wrap up some loose ends in this canyon, see if we can find any more subjects, and then move to another canyon which is uh, not too far away, but it's going to involve a drive to get to it because it's just a little bit easier that way. Um, but I'm carrying a little bit less weight this year, so my whole pack with my 8x10 kit and everything uh, is just over 34 pounds, which is pretty awesome for an 8x10 kit. But I'm definitely looking forward to a good night's sleep, and we'll see what all I can find in the morning. So It's a long day.
So I went ahead and exposed two sheets of Pro V 100F on that scene. And one photo was taken a little bit before uh, the sun started creeping into the foreground. And the other one was just before uh, the sun would have uh, gone right into the camera lens because I was uh, shooting towards the sun, but there was a big cliff that was blocking the sun for most of the morning. So it'll be interesting to see how that one turned out. But after that, I went back to camp, got myself some breakfast, and now I'm heading up the canyon to uh, go revisit a scene I tried to photograph last year, but I couldn't quite put a composition on it. So I'll see if that will be a shootable scene this year. And along the way, I already found a couple of the subjects that might be pretty decent for uh, perhaps tomorrow. But absolutely beautiful, blue skies overhead, really calm wind and just uh, making my way through some really nice slot canyons right now. This is such a beautiful place. All right, so that was one second F40, and it was absolutely calm when I triggered the shutter. And I've used my 240 millimeter lens, which is a moderate wide angle, and uh, just aiming upward at the tree so that the trunk goes up against the background there. Pretty cool. All right, that was one half second at F36. And I found this pretty cool scene here um, with these, some sort of salt deposits coming out of the sandstone from when the floods raged through here. And it's kind of cool because it looks like clouds. And also you have all the lines of the sandstone itself and they kind of swoop through the composition. So I used my normal 300 millimeter lens and uh, just framed a shot there, a little bit of front tilt, a little bit of front swing to get the whole plane in focus there. But pretty cool scene. And this is also the fourth sheet of film I've exposed today. I have a total of six sheets of Provia and then two sheets of Portra 160. So I've shot a good chunk of my film and I have those two remaining sheets I wanna hold on to for two subjects tomorrow morning but definitely pretty cool to put my camera at a bunch of stuff today.
Although it might seem odd to hike this far into a remote canyon with only eight sheets of film, the limitation isn't as significant as it seems, especially when exposing only a single sheet of film on most subjects. As I made my way back to camp that evening, I was filled with gratitude for my experience that day, and I look forward to the many opportunities that would await in the days to come. Of the three subjects I photographed, only one photo stands out, though it wasn't the final image of the cloud-like pattern in the sandstone. I do like this subject, though I wish the scene somehow had more depth and dimension, a difficult feat for something so inherently flat. The oak tree made for a wonderful subject, but something happened with my composition. I suspect the panning base on my tripod head was loose, allowing my camera to shift to the right while removing the dark cloth. It's the first image I'm extremely satisfied with, a lone juniper set against beautiful sandstone, amidst a zen garden of cryptobiotic soil and other desert plants, the entire scene drenched in soft reflected light. This was my favorite photo from this trip, and I'm glad the conditions were absolutely perfect. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints in my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support. Thank you.